Okay, so now we can uh, um, put together the things that we learned about the similarities and the differences between the transformer and the induction machines, uh, in particular the defig, um, to look at the voltage current transformations and the active and the reactive power on the status side and the rotor sides and so on. Okay, so this is our original upper phase equivalent circuit and then uh, we can re uh, replace this uh, rotating structure by the uh, uh, voltage source and the current source. Um, uh, so consider Vs as the, the phasor of the um, applied stator voltage, same as the grid voltage. And then after some drop in the um, uh, stator side uh, impedances, the stator resistance and the stator leakage inductance, so you get this voltage EM phasor across the magnetizing inductance. So what is shown inside this um, boxed area? So that is the um, uh, that represents the air gap. So this side is the stator side at the air gap. This is the rotor side at the air gap. Um, so the voltage on the stator side of the air gap um, across this magnetizing inductance is EM. And as we learned in the um, towards the end of the last uh, video, the part one, the um, voltages scale by the product N S. Okay. So the secondary indu or the rotor induced voltage represented by this controlled voltage source. So that has a magnitude N times S times the EM. All uh, this is a phasor. Okay. And note that the um, EM is at the grid frequency, synchronous frequency omega S, um, whereas the rotor frequency after the scaling, uh, assuming the um, rotor speed is omega R, uh, it is um, um, an S given by omega R, omega slip over omega S, then the um, rotor side frequency, as we saw earlier, is at omega slip. So, so this voltage minus the um, rotor side converter voltage VR again as a phasor. So their difference uh, divided by the impedance RR plus J omega slip LLR would give the rotor, actual rotor current IR. Okay. Um, so now we know how to transfer the rotor current to the status side. Uh, it scales by the physical turns ratio which is N. So the um, status side current would be N times IR. Okay. It does not scale by the value of slip, only the voltage does so. Okay. So the complete current uh, corresponding to the rotor current IR on the set side is N times IR. Once again, the frequency of N IR, this current source, is at the grid frequency omega S, whereas the frequency of the rotor current by itself was at omega slip. Okay, so if you consider the power on both sides, let's look at the second, the rotor side first. Okay. So the apparent power is given by uh, this is a voltage N S E M uh, phasor times I R conjugate. That is the apparent power. Its real part is P R. Its imaginary part is Q R. Okay. Um, on the status side, the apparent power is N N I R is a current E M is a voltage. So the power is N E M times I R conjugate um, and uh, its real part is uh, active power and its imaginary part is reactive power. If you compare these quantities with the rotor side quantities, there is a difference by a factor 1 over S on the on the on the status side. Right? So the real power, if the real power on the rotor side is P R, then the real power on the status side is P R over S. Similarly, Q R uh, reactive power on the rotor side corresponds to QR over S on the status side. Now keep in mind that S, yes, uh, at least in the case of um, uh, induction machines operating as motor, S is a very small value, like slip of 3% is what is typical, uh, or S equals 0 0.03, a very small value. Okay. Uh, in the case of defig, S is not uh, always a very small value. It actually covers a wide range uh, between S of uh, positive, um, say, 0.2 or 0.25 to S of negative 0.2 or 0.25. Okay. So that is the uh, that corresponds to the um, the range of speed variation that is possible in the in the defig machine. So so anyway, so the difference between the um, 
uh, the power at the stator at the air gap to the power at the air gap in the in the rotor windings so that is pr over s minus pr or 1 minus s over s times pr uh, so that is the difference and that actually goes as the mechanical power to the shaft right in the case of motors or comes as as a mechanical power input through the shaft from the wind turbines in the case of uh, wind generator systems um, so we are following uh, as i mentioned earlier the motoring convention so that is why this power is shown as leaving the air gap into the it's into the mechanical load okay? and that is given by this expression so this may become negative if um, say slip s is negative so that is a generator mode of operation or if uh, even with positive s yes, if pr happens to be a negative power then once again the mechanical power is negative which simply means that mechanical power is actually coming from the wind turbines into the into the machine into the rotor okay so so that is uh, important expression so we derived an expression um, in terms of de derived an expression for mechanical power in terms of the rotor power and the slip value s and uh, notice that in the case of transformers, the status, the primary side power should be exactly equal to the secondary side power, whereas in this case they are drastically different. Okay? So as an example, let's say S equals uh, say 0.1. Okay? So that will make this P mechanical, or the difference between the stator power and the rotor power is 1 minus 0.1, so that's 0.9 divided by 0.1, so that is 9. Okay? So it is the difference is. Um, uh, like if you say PR is 1 per unit, then the stator power is 9 nine per unit, a very big difference. And, the, and that is what is the mechanical power. So that is regarding the active power. If you consider the reactive power, it's also a very similar situation. Uh, the reactive power on the rotor side is N as EM, IR conjugate, its imaginary part. Whereas on the stator side, the reactive power is uh, N, EM, IR conjugate, its uh, imaginary part okay. and uh, if QR is the reactive power on the stator side um, similar to what we saw in the active power here also the stator side reactive power is QR over S okay. and the difference between the two is what we denote as Q, gen Q generated okay. so that is uh, similar to this is 1 minus S over QR and uh, that can go to compensate for some of the reactive power losses and the leakage uh, more importantly, in the magnetizing inductance, um, getting the power factor of operation close to unity, or it can even inject reactive power to the grid uh, by this rotor side uh, control. Okay. So the key point is just uh, by one per unit uh, uh, control of power, uh, uh, one per unit in terms of rotor power, uh, so which is a very small fraction of the rated power of the complete defect machine. So, by controlling a small amount of reactive power, we are able to control a much larger mechanical power. And similarly, by controlling a very small amount of reactive power in the rotor side, uh, through the rotor side converter, we can control or inject a much larger reactive power into the grid. So, you know, if you define the power coming into the state of winding at the air gap as, uh, say, PG for P gap, so PG is the power process by the state of winding at the air gap. Then the rotor power is simply S times the PG. Right? Just that 1 over S relationship holds good again. So PR is S times PG. So once again that shows that uh, the rotor power only process S times the actual air gap power. And S being very small results in very low ratings for the rotor side converters. And therefore the grid side converter also it simply processes the power needed by the rotor side converter. Um, so as I said, the difference between the active power process between these two windings is the mechanical power. It's either absorbed or sourced depending on if you're operating it as a motor or, or as a deep wake generator. So the so, so far we have always been assuming that the rotor somehow is rotating at the speed omega r. Right? So that was the assumption that we made throughout our several slides before in all our analysis before. So this p mech uh, actually corresponds 
to the mechanical power that is needed to make sure the rotor is rotating at the angular speed omega r um, in spite of uh, uh, the mechanical torque Tm uh, acting to oppose that motion. Right? So, so the mechanical power is equal to torque times omega. In this case, P mac is omega r times the electromagnetic torque Tm. So that is equal to um, uh, this value as we saw in the previous slide, 1 minus S over S times PR, or in terms of PG, um, PG is... Um, PR over S, so substitute PR over S is PG, get 1 minus S times PG. So that is the expression for the mechanical power, which as we'll see, uh, will prove to be uh, useful in uh, many other calculations. A similar thing for the reactive power, if we define the reactive power at the stator, at the air gap as QG, uh, then the uh, reactive power at the rotor, again at the air gap, is uh, S times uh, QG. So once again, by controlling a small amount of um, um, reactive power QR, um, you can control a much larger uh, QG, Q generated. Okay. Uh, so similar expression as in the case of active power, the uh, QG or Q generated is 1 minus S over times uh, QR, which is also the same as uh, 1 minus S times QG, because Q over S is QG. Um, so unlike in the active power case, as uh, as written here, where the difference in the uh, state of the rotor power actually goes out as the uh, active power or the mechanical power to the shaft or mechanical power from the shaft into the road into the into the air gap or into the machine um, the qg is actually uh, just generated by the by the defig itself okay so now we are in a position to use the various uh, relations the transformation that we studied to uh, put together the complete perface equivalent circuit all refer to just one side either to the stator as shown at the top or all of them refer to the rotor side as shown at the at the bottom so the uh, equivalent circuit referred to the stator is the one that is um, um, mostly used for many of our uh, study purposes um, uh, but for the sake of completeness I also show the equivalent circuit referred to the rotor as well at the, at the bottom so let, let's look at the stator referred equivalent circuit. So all the stator side quantities, the Vs, the um, the two currents, the Is and the Im, and these impedances, they are all referred to the stator, so there is no change in them. The quantities on the rotor side, they need to be transferred using, uh, as uh, appropriate, combinations of the physical turns ratio and the S and so on. So first of all, our convention uh, is that the prime this in this IR prime for example that refers to scaling only by the turns ratio the physical turns ratio of the two windings so IR prime uh, simply uh, is so what we see from here is this is the rotor current IR and now we are transferring that to the primary side so just by the turns ratio it should be IR over N and IR over N is what is denoted as IR prime Similarly, for the rotor resistance, what we have on the uh, original circuit is RR, and we are going to transfer that to the primary side. Now, uh, there are actually two scaling factors involved in this transfer or in this transformation. One is by the physical turns ratio, that would be RR over N squared, and that entire quantity, RR over N squared, that is defined as the RR prime. In addition, you also need to scale it by the uh, slip S yes, because the voltage is scaled by S yes, and the currents do not. Right? So the impedance is scaled by S yes, also. So RR referred to the rotor side will become RR prime over S. Yes, okay? So that is the combined these two resistances is really RR prime S. Yes. The reason why I denote them separately as two separate resistances will become obvious in the in the next slide. Uh, so that is the rotor resistance. Uh, the rotor leakage inductance, so originally on the rotor referred inductance was J omega slip or the reactance was J omega slip times LLR. Now, so when you scale the uh, 
the inductance first of all there's LR, LLR prime to consider the scaling by the turns ratio that's LLR over n squared it's LLR prime and then you also need to scale it by s so it is uh, a LLR prime uh, divided by s okay so uh, so it's j omega slip over s LLR prime but omega slip over s is nothing but uh, omega s so therefore the actual leakage inductance of the rotor referred to the state of side could be j omega s the grid frequency uh, times LLR prime and the last quantity to be transferred from the rotor to the status to the status side is the applied voltage from the rotor side converter which is denoted as this VR phaser so to take it to the uh, status side the first physical turns ratio translation would be um, VR uh, over N so that is VR prime so, okay. uh, and then we also need to scale it by S so all the voltages get scaled by S so it should be VR over NS VR over N is VR prime so we need VR prime over S and that is split as two separate voltage sources again we will discuss the reason for that in the in the next slide so if you add these two so VR plus 1 minus S over S VR prime so that is uh, VR minus uh, VR prime uh, minus VR prime plus uh, VR prime over S so that's VR prime over S and similarly if you add these two you get RR prime uh, RR prime over S which is what we uh, derive okay so as I said this is what is the more useful equivalent circuit but uh, if you look at the uh, equivalent circuit with everything referred to the rotor this is what it is all the rotor side quantities are unchanged uh, actually there is a typo here all the frequencies whether it's a rotor side or the status side uh, if you refer all the quantities uh, to the rotor side they're all at the same frequency of omega slip so the typo is that this should be j omega slip times lm prime that is the impedance of the matrixing inductance referred to the rotor side uh, grid side voltage is simply vr rotor resistance is just rr and the impedance uh, is j omega slip times llr no, no changes there on the primary side so what was originally omega s lls gets scaled by the uh, turns ratio n squared as well as the factor s so scaling by n squared is simply written as lls lls prime and uh, s times omega s gives you omega s for rs you need to multiply by uh, n squared that makes it rs prime but also multiply by s so what we need is s times rs prime and that is split as to these two separate things and if you add these two you will see that this is really uh, s times rs prime the grid or the state of voltage vs is uh, becomes vs over uh, vs times n so that's vs prime uh, and also uh, times s to consider the scaling by the slip s so once again if you add these two quantities you get uh, S times uh, Vs prime okay so coming back to the uh, stator referred per phase equivalent circuit as shown here as derived in the previous uh, slide um, so in this if you consider the power that comes from the stator and reaches the air gap at the stator side um, so of that power a uh, small part is lost as the the residue loss in the physical winding of the of the rotor rotor windings and a part is also goes into the rotor side converter so vr is injected voltage and uh, if you know the current then you can calculate what is the power the actual power that goes into or comes out of the rotor side converter the difference so this power minus the power lost in the resistance and the power that goes to the rotor side converter uh, so that difference is really the mechanical power okay. so again it could be positive it could be negative uh, positive mechanical power corresponds to motoring mode of operation negative power corresponds to uh, the defect and uh, generator system in this case wind generator system so the actual loss in the physical resistance of the windings is uh, this RMS current IR prime squared times the RR prime 
that is the physical loss in this resistance um, and similarly the power that goes to the um, to the grid side to the rotor side voltage source uh, is uh, vr prime times ir prime conjugate its real part is the power uh, going into the rotor side converter okay? so the remaining two terms so rr prime is accounted for to get the power loss vr prime is accounted for to get the power process in the rotor side converter the remaining two terms so rr prime one minus s over s and vr prime same one minus s over s uh, the power corresponding to these two components is the actual mechanical power So, so now we have an expression for the mechanical power and remember that what you are showing is a per phase equivalent circuit. To get the total mechanical power you need to multiply the mechanical power corresponding to one phase by three to get the complete three phase power. So from the previous slide the mechanical power was the power um, uh, in this resistance is not really a power loss it is actually the power corresponding to this i squared r times this this part of the resistance uh, this part of the resistance and the power process in this voltage source so that would be the power in the resistance is i r prime the squared these are all um, rms quantities uh, so when i define the phases in the wind energy module of the course these are uh, these are RMS values. That is why I was able to write this completely simply as IR prime squared. Uh, if we use peak as our phasor definition, then there is a factor of two needed uh, in this equation. Okay, anyway, so we are going to stick to RMS values in our phasor definition just for the wind energy module of the course. Okay. So the power in that resistance is uh, three times IR prime squared times the resistance itself, which is RR prime one minus S over S. The power process in the in this part of the voltage source is uh, uh, once again the factor of three corresponding to three phases, and the apparent power is uh, Vr prime this voltage magnitude Vr prime one minus S over S times the current which is Ir prime conjugate, and its real part is the uh, actual active power times three is the total active power from the three phases. So that's the mechanical power and. Uh, uh, we know that mechanical power uh, is uh, torque times omega or TEM times omega R. So that gives an expression for the torque, which, which is all of this expression divided by omega R. So why this is important is because is uh, uh, it's because this equation can be used to draw the uh, speed torque characteristics. So you're defining the torque in terms of the speed and some other currents and the distances. Okay, so this can be uh, used to draw the speed torque characteristics as well as understand for different phase angles of the applied voltage VR, we can get uh, uh, motoring and the generator modes of operation.